Hi, I'm Mark Brown. I write and illustrate the Arthur books. And I think you probably see a lot of Arthur on PBS. And I, I bet you're spending a lot of time at home these days. I know I am. And I guess, you know, you have to find the good things in spending time at home. Like you have a chance to do some learning uh, or reading. I've been doing a lot more reading these days. And I thought maybe we could read together. I brought a book with me. Maybe you know it. Arthur's New Puppy. I'm going to read the story for you and show you the pictures. And here we go. Arthur's New Puppy. Arthur loved his new puppy. And Pal loved Arthur. He's a very active puppy, said Arthur. He's a very naughty puppy, said D.W. Don't worry, said Arthur. I'll have him trained in no time. Here's your new home, said Arthur. You'll have the whole garage to yourself. But Pal did not like the garage. As soon as Arthur put him down, Pal ran and hid. He feels lonesome, said Arthur. Can he stay in the house? Please, please, please. Oh, all right, said Mother, but only for a day or two. Arthur made a cozy spot for Pal in the kitchen. I thought you might need a few newspapers, said D.W. Arthur held Pal carefully, the way his puppy book showed him. Look, he's so excited, said Arthur. Look at your pants, said D.W. You have excitement all over them. It's okay, said Arthur. He's just a baby. Well, I think baby dogs should wear diapers, said the D.W. Look at all those newspapers D.W. brought in. Later, Pal ate his dinner in a flash. Uh-oh, said D.W. He has that look in his eyes again. Quick, said Arthur. His leash. But when Pal saw his leash, he ran and hid. I don't think he likes his leash, said D.W. Help me find him, said Arthur. I guess he didn't have to go after all, said D.W. I was wrong. No, you were right, said Arthur. He just went. Uh-oh. Another mess. Puppies are like that, you know. Later that night, when everyone was asleep, Pal yelped and howled until he woke up the entire family. Go to sleep, said Arthur. Pal wanted to play. Don't forget to close his gates, called Mother. Good night said father. Good luck, said D.W. The next morning, Arthur was still in the kitchen. Wake up, sleepyhead, said D.W., and be careful where you step. Oh, no, said Arthur. <gasps> I forgot to close Pal's gate. Here's your scooper, said Mother. You think this is bad, said Father. Wait until you see the living room. Uh-oh, I wonder what happened in the living room. The kitchen looks pretty bad. 
Hal looked very proud of himself. My new drapes, cried mother. My doll, screamed D.W. Bad dog, said Arthur. Hal is moving to the garage, ordered mother. Here's the key to the garage, said father. I'll help you move his things after dinner. Father, put the key on the hall table. Look at the living room. It is a mess. Let's face it, Pal is in trouble. Arthur packed up all of Pal's things and went to get the garage key. But it was gone. The whole family searched for the key. Pal watched. It has to be here somewhere, said mother. But the key was nowhere to be found. They're looking everywhere. Can you see the key anywhere? I can't see it. It looks like you can stay in the house one more night, said Arthur. I heard mom and dad whispering, said D.W. And pal's in big trouble. They said he better be trained soon or else. Shh, said Arthur, you'll hurt his feelings. That night, Arthur remembered to close Pal's gate. Well, that was good. I wonder what's going to happen. At school, Arthur told Francine and Buster about training Pal. I'm gonna teach him to do all kinds of things, said Arthur. I used to have a puppy too, said Buster, but he was too much trouble. My parents sent him to a farm. My cousin had a problem puppy, said Francine. No one could train him. One day he just disappeared while she was at school. After school, Arthur hurried home. You think he's going to check on Pal? I hope Pal is still there. Oh no, said Arthur. What happened? I thought I'd take him for a walk, said D.W. But when he saw the leash, he went wild. You better get this cleaned up before Mom sees it. Where is Mom? asked Arthur. In the backyard, said D.W., looking for the garage key. Have you seen my dog training book? asked Arthur. What's left of it is over there, said D.W. What a mess. Can you see Arthur's dog training book? It looks like Pal ate it. That night, Arthur gave Pal an extra training lesson. I'll help you train this beast, said D.W. Let me get my whip. No, said Arthur. Dogs respond better to love. Watch, said Arthur. He's getting better. Sit, said Arthur. Lie down, said Arthur. Stay, ordered Arthur. I know something you'll understand, said D.W. Time for your walk, pal. He just needs a little more work. That's all, said Arthur. What happened when D.W. said that? It looks like pal didn't want his leash. He's gone. But pal needed a lot more work. Arthur set up a training school in the backyard. On Monday, they worked on sit. On Tuesday, they worked on down. Wednesday was stay day. By Thursday, Pal was doing tricks. Good dog, Pal, said Arthur. Arthur decided to put on a puppy show for his family. When they see how well you're trained, they'll never send you away, said Arthur. Arthur got up early Saturday morning to give Pal a bath. After breakfast, 
Arthur's family took their seats. Welcome to Arthur's puppy show, said Arthur. He held his breath. What you are about to see will amaze and astound you. If Pal amazes us any more, our whole house will be destroyed, said D.W. I wonder what's going to happen in this puppy show. It could be trouble. Arthur clapped his hands. Come, he said, and Pal came. Sit, said Arthur, and Pal sat. Down, said Arthur. Down went Pal. Pal even did a trick. Good dog, said Arthur. He is a good dog, said Mother. You mean he won't have to live on a farm, asked Arthur. Of course not, said Father. Not even in the garage. No one noticed Pal run behind the rose bushes. Where is Pal going? He's always running and doing something, isn't he? Well, he's a puppy. That's what puppies do. They're very excitable. When Pal returned, he sat up and wagged his tail. Look, he has something in his mouth, said D.W. It's the key to the garage, said Arthur. Good boy, Pal, said Father. Amazing, said Mother. That night, Arthur gave Pal a special dinner. Time for your walk, Pal, said Arthur. I'll get your leash. But Arthur couldn't find it anywhere. It was on the hook a minute ago, said Arthur. I know I left it there. I'll help you look, said D.W. Mother and Dad help, too. It has to be here somewhere, said Arthur. Where is that leash? What do you think happened? No one noticed Pal run behind the rose bushes. And there he goes. Did you like that story? I hope you go to the library when you're able to and get some books. And maybe you have some good books at home that you haven't read in a while. That would be a good thing to do if you're looking for something fun. I've been reading a lot lately. So um, I guess we have some questions here that uh, you might like the answers to. The first question is, where did you get the idea to write Arthur? You know what? It was the worst year of my life. And I had just lost my job. I was a teacher and the school closed. And I went home that night and I was really sad. And I went to tuck in my son, Tolan, who was about this big then. No, he's that big. And he said, Dad, will you tell me a bedtime story? And for a minute, I thought, what should I tell him a story about? And Tolan said, Dad, tell me a story about a weird animal. And so I searched the pantheon of children's literature for an unused animal, and artwork happened. So I said, once upon a time, there was a little aardvark. And then Tolan wanted to know his name. And I said, his name was Arthur. And then he said, what did he look like? And so I got a piece of paper and I drew a picture of what Arthur looks like. Maybe I could do that for you right now. Let me see, let me get my pen out. And let's get a piece of paper here. Okay, here's how you draw Arthur. Here's the secret formula, okay. First, we're going to do two letter O's next to each other, hook them together like that. And we're gonna do a large letter U 
like that under the two circles or letter O's. And then we're going to do another smaller letter U for his what? His mouth. And then we're going to add two dots for his nostrils and two bigger dots inside the letter O's for his eyes. And we'll put an upside down U like that for the top of his head. And two lines here for his eyebrows. Oh, we're forgetting something. We have to add his ears. They look a little like ping pong paddles. And we'll put two ears on. And there you have it. There's Arthur. He's pretty easy to draw. I think you could draw him. Our next question is, what is it like seeing your book characters on TV. Wow, it's really exciting. You know, when this whole Arthur on television thing started, I wondered what it would be like. Would it be hard to do this because I hadn't done it before? But luckily, I get to work with a lot of very smart people. And it's kind of like a family. And we all do different parts of the Arthur show that you watch every day. And Everybody is good at a certain part of the show. So what, what I thought was really interesting when I started to see how television worked is that it, it's a lot like the picture book that I just read you. Only we have movement and we have sound and that's what makes it even more exciting in some ways. And you know, another good thing that I learned about Arthur being on television is that we can do things like, oh, when Buster had asthma, or when Arthur lost his, uh, his grandpa, he found out that he had Alzheimer's. Uh, things like that, that maybe wouldn't be a picture book, but we can do them on television. And I find that really helpful and exciting for you guys, because, um, you know, my friend Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers, was really good at teaching all of us how television could be helpful to us. And so I think what Arthur has done best for, for us is that he uh, gets to show you how a lot of things work and describe how things are that are sometimes difficult. So uh, I think that that's pretty exciting for me to watch what Arthur's done on television. So another question is, what are my favorite Arthur adventures that have been on television? The one that pops in my head first is when DW was a copycat and she was doing everything Arthur did and then she started to dress like Arthur. I hope you don't do that to your brothers and sisters, do you? Yeah, sometimes we can be good brothers and sisters, and sometimes not so good brothers and sisters. I had three little sisters. In fact, that's where I got the idea for DW. That's what makes her triply lethal. What do you do to have fun when you have to stay inside? Well, my wife Lori and I like to cook, so we have been cooking a lot. And I heard that some people who are staying inside a lot don't know how to cook. And so my friend had a really good idea. He said, why don't you watch cooking shows on TV? And so I think that should help them. I like, the, I like to watch uh, cooking shows on TV. Um, I've learned a lot that way. And another thing that I've learned on TV, uh, which I really like, are, are ways to help me grow things. Because when I'm not working on books or the TV show, for you guys, I like to work in the garden and I like to grow raspberries and blueberries and then I make pies out of them. So uh, yeah, that's one, one of the other things I do in my spare time. So I just wanna say thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for listening to Arthur's New Puppy. Thank you for watching our show because we work really hard to make them good for you. And uh, I hope that 
You'll watch Arthur on TV on pbskids.org and PBS Kids Video app. Uh, there are all kinds of ways to watch Arthur. And oh, yeah, be sure to watch The Rhythm and Roots of Arthur, which will be on your television very, very soon. Thanks. And stay safe. And don't forget to read a lot of books. Bye. Oh, someone wants to say goodbye. Arthur. Bye. And I say, hey, hey, what a wonderful kind of day.